to 60% of the potential heat energy stored in wood comes from the burning of volatile gases? This process, called secondary combustion, impacts performance and is essential to a smoke-free operation and a cleaner environment. Secondary combustion can easily be achieved if you light and operate your stove correctly. Before striking your match, follow these simple directions to ensure maximum efficiency. First, familiarize yourself with the air control of your stove. Some models may have a dial or spinner placed on the door, while other models may have an air control slide or lever positioned either above the door or below the front ash lip. If you are lighting your stove for the very first time or have recently had it serviced, make sure you ventilate the room by opening windows and doors to allow any curing odors to escape. Also check your wood supply. You should have a reasonable amount of fuel stored close by so that you don't have to disturb your warm and cozy enjoyment with a cold walk to the wood pile. Initially, aim to store one split log for every hour you expect to burn during the evening. You'll be able to anticipate your on-hand wood needs after several fires. The top-down lighting method, which we will demonstrate, is considered the most environmentally friendly way to ignite a fire. To start, you will need several medium-sized split logs, five to ten sheets of newspaper that have been rolled and knotted, and approximately two to three pounds of chopped firewood sticks or kindling. Place a couple of base logs front to back on the bottom grate of the firebox, leaving a three to four inch gap. Next, create a crisscross style kindling stack across the top of the base logs using approximately two pounds of dry kindling sticks keeping the gap open in the middle to position the knotted newspaper sheets. The main objective when first lighting your stove is to allow the heat to quickly escape into the chimney while also establishing chimney draft. Take a moment to stop and check that your primary air control is fully open. Light the newspaper sheets and watch the flames slowly work their way downwards from the top. During this time, probably five to ten minutes, the door remains slightly open. Once the heat produces enough draft through the chimney, you can shut the door. In approximately 45 minutes, the flames will have almost disappeared, leaving a good bed of coals in the base. This is the time that new fuel can be added. To refuel your stove, use a poker or ash scraper to pull the glowing coals to the front of the firebox. Place three pieces of wood, two pounds or so each, over the embers side to side in a single layer with a gap of approximately half an inch between each piece. When the air controls are open fully and the door is closed, the new fuel will ignite within two to three minutes. Finally, once the fire is reestablished, adjust the air control to the required position in order to regulate the heat output and clean combustion. For a small investment, you can take the guesswork out of the firing process and add a stove thermometer that indicates the correct operating temperature or zone your stove should be in. Some simple rules for controlling your wood stove. Low heat output equals less wood and less air. High heat output equals more wood and more air. Also remember to always maintain a bed of glowing wood coals. The final test is to go outside and take a look at the top of the chimney when the stove is in use. If you are using your stove correctly, you will not see smoke. If you happen to see smoke for more than 20 minutes, you should recheck your fuel quality to make certain it is properly seasoned and consult your user manual to make sure you are firing the stove at the correct operating temperature. Smoke-free operation is important because to fully realize the many benefits of renewable wood fuel, you need to look after the environment.